Good morning. Welcome to Lamb of God Church. I'm Wendy Smith. We're glad to have you all with us this morning, and we're very happy for all of you joining us online as well. Welcome. We have a few announcements today. Uh, the first one, the shade sales is coming along. I have good news. That number has changed. We just received a check this morning. So uh, we are now only $3,225 from our goal. So we are inching closer and closer. Um, so very good. Thank you so much. And thank you also for all of you who donated to the food drive. You can see on the image there on the screens, we had a tremendous food drive this month. And as you know, the summer months are really lean at the food bank. So thank you all very much. And then school supplies, we are continuing to uh, collect backpacks and school supplies for children in need. Next week is the last day that you can bring them in next Sunday. So you can bring them during the office hours this week or next Sunday. Uh, and they will be going to children in foster care, uh, children in Immokalee, and children at the Act Shelter. So um, we are helping a lot of families that uh, need it, especially this time of year. So thank you very much. Uh, and then next Sunday, Doug Miller, can you all hear me okay? I'm seeing so, okay, all right. Um, Doug Miller from FK Your Diet will be here. And as we've been telling you, he and his son will be here cooking a delicious, delicious brunch. So if you have not signed up yet, please do so. There's a sign up sheet under the mailboxes where you can shoot me an email, but we need to know how many people are coming. And Doug will be here to share his story of growing up in the foster care system and why uh, it is so important for him to do the work that he does supporting uh, foster kids. So we're really excited to have him here. And then as we announced last week, we have tickets on sale for the Go Divas. And Juliana is one of the members of Go Divas. So we're really excited to have them in concert here on November 13th. The reason we started selling tickets in July is because the Gulf Shore Opera and Go Divas tend to sell out of all of their concerts, and they are also selling tickets on their website. So you want to get your tickets early. Um, they'll be available in the office after church or during the week, so you don't want to miss this concert. It is limited seating, so you want to get your tickets early. Um, I do have a sad announcement. Um, we did send out an e-blast, but we want to make sure that the community knows that Camilla Serrato uh, passed away this past week. And Camilla is the mother of Lisa Monkowitz and mother-in-law of Walter Monkowitz. So we ask that you keep the Monkowitz family in your prayers. Um, there is information about a, a service that's happening later this month that went out. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can call the office, but please keep their family in your prayers. And I'd like to uh, welcome Glenn Whitehouse, who will be leading us in worship today. And uh, he has a, an announcement as well. Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Glenn Whitehouse. I'll be filling in for Pastor Carol today. And um, I just wanna let everybody know that we will be doing communion this week. Um, and uh, Pastor Carol uh, blessed the communion elements the last time that she was with us. So um, although I can't do that myself as a lay person, just be assured that, uh, that it's all been done. Uh, please stand now for the gathering song. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, 
and to treasure what is precious in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher. Vanities of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel and Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given the human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity, all is vanity and chasing after wind. I hated my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me. And who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I have toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This is also vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. Word of God, word of life. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Colossians. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living in that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you've been stripped of, off the old self with its practices, and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and free. But Christ is all and in all. The word of God, the word of life. Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or an arbitrator over you? And he said to him, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, 
for one's life does not consist in abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly, and he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to put my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But he's, God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So Florida is kind of a strange state. Um, nobody's really from the same place. So if you meet somebody, you don't have that common bond of growing up together. Um, everywhere else you go, the first question you get is, what did you do? Uh, but if you're retired, nobody knows what you did. I don't know what most of you did. <laughs> um, and if you are working, you're kind of a minor, like me, you're kind of a minor celebrity, right? If uh, for retired people, people don't know what you did. If you're still working, people don't know what to do with you. Uh, <laughs> I, I ride the elevator down in the morning to the garage. Uh, my, I have my briefcase, my, my neighbors, they have their golf clubs, they avert their eyes. Uh, so we're here, we're in a place where uh, nobody knows who each other are or what they did. It's kind of like a permanent summer camp. Uh, you meet people, you have a good time, it's pretty nice. So how did it get this way? Uh, I heard this story once, uh, years ago, there was an older couple in Wisconsin and they got tired of shoveling snow year after year after year. So one day they took that snow shovel, they tied it to their front of their car, and they drove south on Highway 41 until they got to a place where one of the locals pointed at the snow shovel and said, what is that thing, ma'am? And when they got that to that point, they bought a house, they planted the snow shovel in the, in the yard, and uh, that's how Florida was born. <laughs> uh, now, some of you actually may recognize that as a retelling of a much older story, uh, because in fact, the first person to move away from home and go to a retirement community in Greek mythology was Odysseus. And at the end of the Odyssey, uh, Odysseus, who spent his life toiling away at sea, traveling years and years to try to get home, uh, gets, finally gets home, but he's still tired. And he asks the blind seer Tiresias, what should I do now? Tiresias tells him, go, take your oar, you know, the symbol of your profession, and walk inland until you reach a place that knows nothing about the sea, where somebody points at the oar and says, what is that thing? Same story, right? Uh, where they mistake it for a farming tool. And when you get to that point, you plant that oar, you live out your days there, right? Well, welcome to Florida. This is the place where all those oars got planted. Here we are. <laughs> um, well, so that's Florida, and that's retirement, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Uh, retirement, like I said, it's kind of like a permanent summer camp. It's pretty good, or, or so I hear. I'm not there yet, right? Um, it sounds great, though. <laughs> um, or is it, though? Uh, I was thinking about this week's readings that we just heard, and I think this week's readings, in some ways, they're kind of a textbook on the anxieties of retired people, aren't they? So we heard one story um, in Ecclesiastes, it's the, the guy is complaining about leaving everything he worked for, leaving his fortune and his business to the kids, and are they going to make a mess of it? Uh, and just in case you think uh, that was a, an unreasonable fear, in the story with, uh, the, from the gospel story with Jesus, it starts with uh, one of those kids trying to sue the other one over the family fortune, right? That's family business 101, isn't it, folks? <laughs> um, uh, we have another story about somebody building a huge nest egg all through their lives, only to worry that they're not going to live long enough to enjoy it. So I'd say if any of you are financial advisors or actuaries or estate lawyers, this week's readings are really for you. Um, um, but I think there's even more than that, I think there's a much more profound anxiety here, too, in the piece from Ecclesiastes. Uh, you hear the teacher saying, I saw all the deeds that I'd done under the sun. That's how you can tell they're talking about Florida. Uh, I saw all the deeds that I'd done under the sun, and I see that all of it is vanity and chasing after the wind. Uh, 
so vanity chasing after the wind. I think about that, you know, what happened to all that work I did once I stopped doing it? Uh, that work used to define who I was, right? If I'm not the executive vice president of such and such, or the assistant director of this and that, or the professor of XYZ, or the butcher, or the baker, or the candlestick maker, who am I anymore, right? Uh, that's the question asked by that teacher in Ecclesiastes, and I think it's a big one. <laughs> and it's not just for retirees either. You know, I, I can think of myself, uh, I'm at that point where I'm thinking, okay, what do I do with the last uh, 15 or 12 or, or 10 years of my career? Um, do I go back and revisit the dreams that I had when I was a young graduate school, graduate student back in 19... <laughs> 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 or... Um, or do I find some new passion project and putter away at that until it's time for me to go? Uh, maybe I should get ambitious and I should start putting my name in for jobs that have a fancy title. Or maybe that fancy title is just a trick to get me to shovel some more of somebody else's snow before I go. <laughs> um, are any of those things going to be meaningful given that I'm going to stop doing them in the foreseeable future? Uh, or are they just vanity? I think that's the question that's raised by this week's reading. I think that's the real kind of crisis, right? Or the identity question of the retired or the soon to be retired. And I think it reflects a truth about life, which is that um, even though we have a life story, in a lot of ways, life isn't like a story, right? If life was completely like a story, uh, that story would end when the causes and the conflicts and the projects that defined our life end ended. That's the way it works in Hollywood, right? If Hollywood were scripting our lives, I guess we'd all die at our retirement party. Right? <laughs> or in battle or, or something like that, right? But that's not the way things work, is it, for most people? Uh, we know that some people, in fact, don't live long enough to see their goals and their life story come to fruition at all. Uh, that's what happened to the rich man in the parable, right? He toiled and toiled away to uh, try to get some security for himself when he was older, and he wound up dying before he got to enjoy it. In a different way in the Bible, that's what happens to Moses, right? Moses. Uh, spends years and years and years trying to get to the promised land, and in the end, he just gets one little glimpse of it and dies before he crosses the river, right? Well, that's tragic, but for a lot of us, uh, things go differently. A lot of us, in a way, uh, outlive our life story, right? We don't die in the battle or at the retirement party. Uh, we keep on going, but like Odysseus or like the snow shovel couple, um, we're now living in a chapter of our lives that doesn't look a lot like the rest of the book. It's, it's different in a lot of ways. Uh, we're in this strange new land, Florida, uh, with people that we didn't know uh, before we got here. And a lot of the things that used to define us professionally, like Odysseus's or, uh, no longer mean a lot to the people who are around us. So what do we do? <laughs> um, that's where I think the reading that we have from Paul's letter to the Colossians has some meaning for us. Um, Paul says, take your mind off of earthly things. Put to death the ways that you followed in, when living the old life, the greed, the passion, uh, the desires that used to pull you this way and that way, and instead get a renewed self, uh, a new life in Christ, no longer Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, but a new life in Jesus. Now, historically, uh, Paul is talking, I think, here mostly about people who come to Christ for the first time, right? People who are coming out of a sinful life or coming out of a uh, paganism or something like that, finding a new life in Jesus. But I think there's also a message here uh, for those of us who have been lifetime Christians, uh, but who are in the retirement chapter of our lives or close to it. Because Christian or not, uh, a lot of our lives are really defined by those kinds of earthly things that Paul talks about in here, aren't they? Like those passions that Paul talks about, those could be the passions of ambition and accumulation that drives so much of our lives, especially our professional lives. They could be the desire to be respected or admired or recognized, which causes us to do a lot of the things that we pursue in life. Uh, and even those conflicts that he talks about, the things that divide us into Jew or Greek or slave or free, um, those are tied to all those passions and those ambitions that we have. Those are the things that divide us into different professions, different political persuasions, different classes, different nations. Um, those are all part of earthly life for Christians too, let's face it. Um, however, I think you know, with retirement, with that uh, new stage of life where, in a sense, your identity is up for grabs again, um, there's an opportunity to reset, uh, to refocus, to reevaluate away from those things that defined our life before and toward this new life in Christ. 
Uh, so what does that look like? What do we do? Uh, if we're going to follow Paul's advice, cast away that old life and take on a new one in Christ, especially if we're at or near retirement, what do we do? Well, I think there's two ways to understand what Paul said in there. Uh, one way would be to read this would be to think that when Paul talks about putting to death what's earthly, that he literally means preparing for death. In other words, on that reading, uh, we would put to death all of our earthly concerns, change our ways so that we can earn our way into heaven. Uh, maybe we should have thought about that earlier, but yeah, better late than never. Uh, <laughs> on that way of taking the text, uh, this new life in Christ is a new life uh, in a different world, not this one, right? It's pie in the sky by and by. I think that's a lot of uh, the way a lot of people might understand this reading, and I, I frankly think it's also some people's plan for retirement. Um, but I don't like it uh, for the following reason. That whole business of trying to change your life to earn your way into heaven, let's face it, in some ways it's another kind of achievement. It's another kind of way of making it all about me, of pursuing, it's, 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 it's just another promotion, right? Um, Luther, uh, uh, Paul and later Martin Luther were deeply suspicious of this kind of religiosity, and I, I think we ought to be too. One of my favorite stories about Martin Luther is that somebody asked him once, if you knew that Jesus was coming back tomorrow, what would you do? And Luther said, I would plant a tree. I love this story <laughs> uh, because what it says to me is that uh, no matter what it means for God to wrap things up, whether for the earth or for me, um, it's not about the end of the world, but it's about new life in this world. It's about bringing that tree into life. It's not about me and my salvation, uh, but it's about uh, acknowledging and taking care of the people who come after me, the people who are going to enjoy the shade of that tree, right? Christianity, or this new life that we have in Christ, isn't, is a way of living. It's not just a way of, of dying, right? And I think it'll help us to, to think about a way uh, to understand what Paul says that affirms life in that way. I do think that this week's readings point to some ways to live this way, if we think about it. Ways that make this retirement chapter of life an opportunity for a new way of living into Christ. Um, Paul, in that passage that we read, he knows that the pride and the passions that follow us in life are the same ones that divide us into rival groups, uh, Jew and Greek, slave and free. Um, but when we're freed of those things that tied us to one group, right? Uh, we're, we're all just people holding those oars uh, who, don't know, uh, who don't know what each other did or where, where each other came from. We're in that summer camp and our identity is up for grabs again. It's really a chance to reach out in love uh, to people that we, don't, that we wouldn't otherwise do so. It's a chance to get out of our comfort zone and relate to some people that we wouldn't have done, that we wouldn't have talked to or that we wouldn't have met in our working lives. To take up a charity, to get up involved in a community group, to do something that's going to take us out of our comfort zone. And I, I think when we do that, it's an opportunity for us to be real parts of God's plan to heal a divided world. And if we're like the rich man who's sitting with a full storehouse of grain, if we're lucky enough to be one of those people, uh, we don't have to be like dragons hoarding our, our treasure by sitting on top of it all the time, right? Uh, we can open those storeroom doors and find ways to put our treasure to work in the community, just like we do at many things we do here at Lamb of God. And if like that teacher in Ecclesiastes, we're looking back on our working lives and wondering if it was for nothing, wondering if it was vanity and wind, um, I think it's good to remember that to a large extent, it's really our own pride and, ambitious, and ambition that made that work seem empty in the first place. The work itself is still good. And when you refocus some of those talents and some of those skills that you learned in life uh, away from your own achievement and toward uh, people in need, uh, then you really are, I think, living now, uh, living out what it means to have a new life in Christ. Not pie in the sky by and by, but God's work, our hands which you know is the uh, motto of the Lutheran Church. So if you're retired or close to it, uh, you may have spent a lot of time in your life shoveling snow that's no longer around. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of other things that you can do with a shuttle, like plant a tree. So let's get digging. Amen. stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that
that's of worth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper Please stand as together we affirm our faith with the words of the creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high we believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of the theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building of your church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful God, O oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental or physical distress, especially Jennifer, Sean, Carol, Noreen, 
Colin, Neil, Deanna, Gary and Tonya, Judy, Kathy, Elaine, Trudy, Maureen, Katie, Al, Marina, and the family and friends of Camilla Serrato. Renew us at your table of mercy, merciful God. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God. O oh God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints, especially Camilla Serrato. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and be rich in love towards you. Merciful God. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, 
you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Gathered together at the Lord's table, when last together with Pastor Carol, our congregation remembered with thanksgiving the words of consecration that she spoke. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. This is the support of our Lord Jesus Christ. This same bread and cup shared in our community of faith are here sh shared again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, the moment of evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ given for you. Please stand. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Christ our Lord. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Hi, everybody. 